Hi, my name is Tanisha Broadnax, and I would like to welcome you to the Sharon Baptist Church virtual live stream service, where our pastor is Kenneth N. Moore. Our live stream services are available to you on Facebook beginning every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. Please feel free to visit our church website at SharonMBC.org. Again, our church website is SharonMBC.org. We pray that our ministry given to you through both song and preaching will encourage you to hold on to the promises of God. Again, we look forward to you worshiping with us virtually on our Facebook Live, YouTube channel, or even our church website, where we are Restoring the Saints with Love.
this day's blessing for this opportunity to share your word. Thank you for watching over us all week long, bringing us into this present moment. We pray now you'd have your way in this worship experience. Move by your spirit. Speak to our hearts. Lift our hearts and encourage us to run on and see what the end's going to be. We pray now, God, for our nation as we go through this pandemic. We know that you are yet in control. You are our healer and our deliverer. You are our way maker. Guide our feet, O oh God, as we journey through this pilgrim way. Bless your word on today and those that might listen. Bless every ear that hears your word on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, grab your Bibles and notice with me from the book of Colossians chapter 3. The book of Colossians chapter 3. grateful for our praise team ministry for our minister of music musicians and all of those who make this live stream worship possible God is good and he's greatly to be praised from Colossians chapter 3 beginning at verse 1 you'll find these words there if ye then be risen with Christ Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, and not on things on the earth. Amen. For the few moments that we have to share today, I just want you to repeat one word after me. Somebody say focus. Somebody say focus. We are dealing with a time in our life where we are facing so many different distractions. So many things are happening at the same time. We're facing a pandemic called COVID-19. We're dealing with the distractions of those who don't want to admit that America is filled with racial disparities. We're dealing with economic disparities. And even now, more and more we hear of those who would like to suppress our vote. So many things that would catch our attention, so many things that would cause us not to be able to remain focused on what those things that are important. Winston Churchill said, you'll never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. Because life can not be best lived with scattered intentions, constantly changing convictions, or far too many unsettled absolutes. In other words, you can't throw stones at every barking dog. What more of us? need instead of increased faith is more disciplined focus. Often not reaching our destinations at this stage in our lives is really not an issue of lack of belief in God, but it can be an issue of lack of focus on who you should be, what you should be, where your energies are best spent, and where your passions are best applied. I can confess today that so many of my distracting seasons, potentially derailing moments and painful experiences have been because I allowed my focus to become infected by trying to throw stones at every barking dog. God help me in here. The, the Apostle Paul must have had this in mind when right into the saints at Colossae, a place full of converts who were extremely overwhelmed trying to understand their infant faith that is being tempted every day 
by the frenzy of religious practices that are taking place all around them. These young saints are finding it difficult to see the value of being a Christian, particularly because every day they are fighting against the distractions, fighting against having too much fun, fighting against the next big thrill and the excitement of what's going on around them. Paul is trying to teach them one prevailing theological truth, and it is this. He wants them to know that you died to your sins in Jesus Christ, and you need to let that finished work focus you above the frenzy that is taking place around you. Somebody say focus. Paul is saying to the saints there, what I'm trying to say to you today, you have to focus. Focus on Christ above the frenzies that are taking place all around you. Now that means the things that are attacking your faith, the, uh, complete, competing with your faith, or, or raising questions regarding your faith. You can't let any of these rob you of your focus. In fact, your destination in life is to a place called spiritual maturity. Then, then you're going to have to fight each and every day to stay focused on reaching that destination. So, so the premise is clear. Living distracted, derailed, depleted is not always an indication of a need for more faith. Sometimes it is an indication for the need of more focus. Yeah, yeah. It's not always an issue of how much or how little confidence I have in God, but in how disciplined I can be to stay focused spiritually. So I cannot be pulled to either side of unessential issues, projects, or opportunities that are not even God-ordained for this season in my life. God, help me. That the enemy can't always find a way to weaken your faith, but God knows he can find a way to get you all focused. Somebody say focus. You mess around and start making minor things, major fighting areas that are, the are not the cause of the real problems or stresses that you're currently experiencing, fighting the wrong enemies and meditating on the wrong things, concerned with the wrong issues and fighting with the wrong folk. We trust God, but we can't focus long enough to hear him tell us anything beyond what distractions keep yelling at us. Whenever I have wasted time or released energy in the wrong direction or offered what scripture says is throwing pearls to the swine, it has almost never been an issue of trust and unbelief, but a loss of my focus. And Paul is implying that maybe this happens because I'm expecting God to keep my focus. And Paul is trying to teach us that God is expecting you to set your own focus. God help me in here. You, you and I have to take the discipline, spiritual responsibility to do what Paul says. And here's what he says. He says, set your mind. Somebody say, set your mind. That is, get inside your own head and force focus upon the centered presence of God so that the frenzy going on around you does not have the capacity to pull you from the center. Transforming your mind, God will do that. Setting your mind, you're going to have to take care of that all by yourself. I wish I had a praying church. And the way you stay in the field of opportunity around the harvest of potential, walking by the strength of your faith, not giving in to distractions and recovering from faulty decisions, overcoming what has been the best use of your time, wasting time and giving space and attention to folk who didn't deserve to even know your name, to, is to live consistently alert uh, about the condition of your focus. Somebody say focus. Because you can't control what other people are going to do. You can't control what other people are going to think. You can't control the arrival or of or the denial of certain life opportunities. But you can choose to focus on the life Christ is living within you. 
you can focus on the life Christ is living through you and let Christ capture your attention until paying attention to him makes you not want to pay attention to anybody else. You can't control what will be swirling around in your life. You can't control uh, the, the fact that you're going to have to face threats. You can't control the fact that you're going to have to face pains. You can't control the fact that you're going to have to uh, face hurts. You can't control the fact that you're going to have to face disappointment. You can't control the fact that you're going to have to face bad news. I wish I had a witness. You can't control the fact that you're going to have to face broken promises. You can't control the fact that you're going to have to face people's irrational, illogical, and sometimes nonsensical human behavior. But you can decide this thing, that I'm not focusing on other people's illogical behavior. I'm not getting caught up in other people's drama. I'm not being dragged into other people's mess. I wish I had somebody. I'm not living based upon other people's perception. I'm not letting pain and hurt drag me down the street when I've made so much progress. Tell somebody I've made progress and I'm going to focus on the fact that I'm stable in Jesus Christ. God help me in here because if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? And if I don't know anything else, I know God loves me. And he's given me grace. And I know he's given me mercy. And I know in him I have a future. And I know I'm already appointed. And I know I'm already anointed. And my job is to stay focused rather than to give in to the frenzy. Uh, here's what we need to do, and I'm going to take my seat. First thing, there's only one thing I want you to con concentrate on this week. It's to change your strategy. Tell somebody, change your strategy. Change your strategy. Set your mind. And I, I don't know, but I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, this is a season of focus. How do you offer focus? Teach yourself how to set your mind. Paul says, set your mind, take some highs off this mic, set your minds on things above, not on things below. Paul is teaching them to interpret their lives from the lens of an above advantage point. Weigh your options from an above advantage point. In other words, say about your condition what Jesus does. And see your condition, how Jesus does. So don't give more stress to anything, God help me, that prayer can address. And the word has already defined. And since the word says that you are stronger than the stuff that you are seeing from below, stop walking like the conquered and start living like a conqueror. I wish I had a prayer in church. Stop sweating what does not even worry Jesus. And if it don't worry him, it ought not sweat you. Tell somebody in your house, get in your own head. Shape your opinion about the frenzy taking place in your life based upon uh, on the above view that you are getting from Christ who sits above creation having died to redeem it and i need to plant this seed in your mind and i'm gonna take my seat when you set your mind on things above it is suggesting that you don't let a below average vantage point make you shape an opinion about where you are who you are what you're dealing with or where you're trying to go i need to say that again I said, when you set your mind on things above, it is suggesting that then that you don't let a below average vantage point make you shape an opinion about where you are, who you are, what you are dealing with, or where you're trying to go. Because a below vantage point says you ain't got enough money. 
a below vantage point says you ain't educated enough. A below vantage point says you done messed up so many times that you don't even have a right to grab for anything better. But an above vantage point says he's already forgiven you of your sins. And he's already cleansed you from unrighteousness. And he's given you the spirit and made you more than able to accomplish that which you cannot think or imagine. A below vantage point says, I don't have nobody to put me in the pool. And while I'm coming, another gets in before me. But an above vantage point says, just answer the question, man. Do you want to be made whole? Do you know how much stuff becomes petty when you see it with a set mind? Do you know how many of you don't have to worry about when you deal with them with a set mind? Because crazy ain't normal. Frenzy ain't normal. You ought to look at somebody in your house and say, get in your own head. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm focused. And I've changed my strategy. And I don't have time to waste on the frenzy. Because I've got to face some stuff this week. I've got to fight some stuff this week. I've got to forge ahead this week. I've got to complete some stuff this week. I've got to close up some things this week. And I've got to open up some new opportunities this week. And I can't waste my time because time is a gift that has come from God. And I've got to focus so that God can get the glory out of my life. Because the Bible says that he that has begun a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Focus. Somebody shall focus. Y'all ain't talking to me. I say, wake up everybody in your house and say, it's time for this house to get focused. Somebody shall focus. Focus until victory comes. Focus until opportunity shows up at your house. Focus until joy returns. Focus until problems flee out of your space. Focus until calamity gives way to possibility. Focus until your gifts make room for you. Shiny ass. Focus until the enemy has got a backup and go another way. Focus until your eyes can see, your heart can feel, your hands can touch, and you can testify that I put my hands to the plow and I won't look back, shiny ass, focus until the word becomes flesh. Shout focus. Get in your own head. Set your own mind and focus until things get better. God is shifting in the seasons. And there are so many things that are distracting the church. And if the church and the people of God would set their minds on things above. They wouldn't be so threatened about what's going on in the earth. Because you can be in the world and not of the world. <laughs> this coronavirus is serious. But the word declares that by his stripes, I am 
healed. And I will not waste my time dealing with the frenzy of the mindset of this world. I dare you to tell somebody, I trust God with everything. Tell somebody again, I trust God with everything. Focus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace.